Well, it really is great to be back. It was a great two weeks away in the mountains. You can probably see I still have a little mountain on me. <laughs> but uh, it is wonderful to be back. I missed you all. I, I genuinely love being a part of this place. The story of this transfiguration that we read can be viewed from many perspectives, Kenneth. It's a deep well of meaning. But at its core, at its core, this story is about the identity of Jesus Christ. We hear this from God's own voice. We hear about who Jesus is. When he says, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. He is the son of God. Who we are to listen to. But not only that, we also hear about the identity of Jesus when we hear about Moses and Elijah there. Moses is the lawgiver. If you see it from a Jewish perspective or even a Christian perspective, Moses is the one with all authority over the law. He's the lawgiver. And Elijah there, the voice of the great and mighty prophet who himself was involved with the, bringing someone back to life. In this scene, we see the all authority of law and pro prophecy there, and they're participating in what God is doing through Jesus Christ, which is the culmination of sorts of, what, of God's work in the world. And, and we see, therefore, that Jesus here is being given us all authority over law and prophecy, the identity of Jesus that is painted that he is the Son of God with all authority of all scriptures that we should listen to. This is, this is helpful to us. This, this truly is, I think, in many ways. For when we read scriptures, for one reason, one way it's helpful to us, when we read scriptures and we come across those Old Testament scriptures, the ones we don't like, those difficult ones. And so we, over here we're hearing um, something like, you should pray against your enemies and hate them and pray to God to smite them. But then in the New Testament, we hear Jesus say, but I tell you that you should what? You should love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And we hold them up and we say, what are we to do? There's two conflicting messages in the Bible. Did God change? Well, the story of the transfiguration clearly shows us that it is Christ that has given all authority over all scriptures. He is the clarification and the revelation of God. You could say he is the clarification of revelation for us when we are, when we are reading our scriptures. So this, this can be very good. This was the clarification that obviously the Jews needed. It's obviously a clarification that we are, ourselves need who God is. As I reflected upon this, this story, I was driving back from Arizona. Not a short drive, I might add. Had plenty of time to think about this. And I, as I did, I was also reflecting on the fact that today is my one year anniversary as your priest. So, um, <laughs> so as I reflected upon this, um, it was the Old Testament reading, the strange thing with Moses, that, that really reminded me of how often and how easy it is that we get confused about who God is and who God isn't. Moses comes down the mountain and his face is dazzling white. He doesn't know this. His brothers, his brother Aaron and the others, they see him and they flee for him. And Moses is like, what's going on? It is just me. But they see his face transfigured like this, transformed like this. And, and they... They think he's been changed to a God. They fear his presence. <clears throat> Moses is like, it's just me. We sometimes, even for good and understandable reasons, get confused about who God is and who he is not. Now, I need you to stay with me because this is a loose comparison because it sort of sounds like I'm comparing myself to Moses. So please forgive me if that is the way it comes across. But as I, as I reflected upon this last year with you all, this has been just such a rich year of blessing and excitement and such a great year together. And I love, honestly, when you all come up to me and say, Rob, look at what you have done over the last year. You say, man, you're good. 
And inside I'm like, yeah. I, mean, I like it. I imagine Moses sort of liked it when they treated him like he was responsible for all the mighty things that God was doing. I do. I, I like it. I mean, think of all the Wednesday night suppers I've cooked, right? <laughs> was Moses a god? No. If you know his story, Moses was a murderer at one point. Right? If you don't know his story, come to my Sunday school class in two weeks. I like getting credit for all the things that God does through the ministries of his church. But consider this, over the last year, our attendance has increased by around 70%. But moving past that, just think of the joy. Think of the love in community that we have in these pews. And if you are new, I just beckon you to be patient and look for it. Think of the forgiveness that has happened in this church, the forgiveness you've given to one another. Think of it over the last year. Think of the grounds. As we've repaired our grounds, it's not just the grounds that have been repaired. It has been relationships, true church, and everything we do has been being formed, loving, kind, faithful, generosity, which is inspiring. The ministry is helping the poor. Last week we had our first food pantry we had, they advertised for about six days and they opened and they fed over 80 people, 26 families over 80 people. The hearts of the people in this church have been touched. And don't get me started on how we could have the staff we have now. Come on. With Josh and Jessica Brown, how in the world, have you heard that story? How in the world did they ever come to be in our midst? How about our music director? If you think you know what Leanne and Sam and, and Noah have in store for this church, I'm telling you, you ain't seen nothing yet. She's got wonderful, faithful things coming. Rachel, who serves this church faithfully year after year. Our bookkeeper, Eleonora, an amazing find. Our sexton, Joe, and our new sexton, Jarvis. I pray I'm not forgetting someone. Uh, Nursery Jordan, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. See, I, my friends, if you are like me, you will tend not to want to, get, to say that every good thing that happens in life is God. After all, we don't want to trivialize God. Or worse, make God seem subjective or relative to our perspective. Instead, we will want to reserve God's acts for these great and powerful deeds like we hear read today, like this transfiguration. But this is simply not how we get to witness our living God. God does not send Moses, Elijah, and Jesus to transfigure himself before us. That's not how we get to see him. Instead, as Jesus has taught us, God is the one who is always with you. He is the one who patiently and steadfastly moves in our midst. When we are faithful or unfaithful, he is there using all things to our good. He is the one that pulls on our heartstrings to care about those who are not like us and to forgive those in the pews who have wronged us. He is the one who pulls us here each week to kneel and honestly try to search our heart and confess our sins and acknowledge our need of our God. He is the only explanation for how a bunch of rig, rig, uh, I want to say rig, rug wrath, rug wrath, I think of, vagabonds, oddballs like you all and me, how we can come together and become such a genuine, loving community of faith. There was a monk I want to mention briefly that most of you have heard of. Great spiritual leader. His name was Benedict, 6th century. Many of you have heard of Benedict. He still leads many people, including myself, in important ways. Benedict taught, essentially, if you boiled it down, four things. To, to make Christ the center of your life. To stay connected with people while you do so. To listen for God in everything. And to do God's will. It is that third important spiritual discipline that I'm calling to your attention today, this year at Holy Cross. To listen for God in everything. 
Although it is hard for many of us to do, we have the opportunity here in this church, if we are willing to acknowledge that I am not God and neither are you, and if we're willing to listen, to listen in all things, then in our midst, here at Holy Cross, you truly can hear his voice, see his fingerprints, witness his presence. We are not perfect. And you need to be prepared to forgive each other and me. But in this community, you find forgiveness. He is moving in our midst. And the years that we have ahead, and I hope it is many, that is my plan, God willing. In the years to come, I have every reason to believe God is going to continue to build a church, a genuine church here in our midst. And I pray, I pray to you this day and always that you will continue to use this opportunity to listen for him, that you might see him and hear him more clearly, that your faith may be strengthened. Perhaps you will begin to even witness his presence in the mirror, in the actions of your own hands and feet. I see him there. I pray you will too. Whether you're a new member or a, or a long-term member, this is God's house. It belongs to you. We have so much to be thankful for. Let us, if you will, sort of an anniversary gift to me if you don't want to, but if you will, join me and let's use the litany of thanksgiving found on page 837. And kneeling to conclude the sermon, let us pray thanksgiving to God for all of our many blessings. 837. Let us give thanks to God, our Father, for all His gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for help and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord, for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord, for all valiant seekers of truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord, for the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To Him be praise.